Today on Pots and Trials we're going to be planning the new vegetable garden and I'm going to show you how to graft an apple tree and that's brought to you with the support of Cobra Garden, Mr Fothergills and Darlac. Hello and welcome to Pots and Trials. Now if you remember last week we moved house so until we find a new house and garden we're borrowing a friend's lovely big vegetable plot so we can carry on growing all our fresh fruit and veg through the summer. So what I've been doing today is just looking at it and seeing where we're going to get things, grow things, talking about a little bit of soil preparation. So it's quite a big plot. There's already an established row of raspberries. There's three rows of strawberries there. We've got a nice plot in between the two and then a big bulk of soil here. And it's lovely soil. It's only just a few doors from where we used to live. I've got lots of compost ready to improve the areas where we need it as well. So it's just a case of really working out where we're going to be planting things today. And although it's a glorious day and we're at the end of March, where we are in North Yorkshire, I don't normally start to plant out until early April. In fact, this weekend, which is Easter weekend, we've got some quite horrible weather forecast here, a really high chance of snow and very cold and windy weather. So I'm holding back for the planting until next week. So next week I will be doing some planting in the garden with you. But we've got plants ready. We've got here lovely broad beans that we started off, if you remember, in cell trays in the greenhouse several weeks ago. This is a variety called Robin Hood, a lovely dwarf variety. Lovely strong plants there. They're just perfect for going out when the weather's good. There's no point putting them out today if they're going to get snowed on over the weekend. Likewise with the shallots here, nice plants, lovely root system so once they get put out into the soil next week they will romp away and we've also got the potatoes all ready and all chittered just waiting to grow away. Can't get it out there and we've got these lovely lovely shoots on there so that again once they get put into the soil they will grow. Onion sets ready, all the seeds we've got, peas and carrots and beetroot and lettuce, spring onions, just waiting to go in the garden. So next week we will be doing that but what I want to do today is to show you how to graft an apple tree and if you remember a couple of weeks ago I went round our old orchard and I gathered some graft wood and these are just one year shoots off some apple trees that I want to graft to produce some new fruit trees and they're just starting to bake, break but they're still fairly dormant and it's nice fresh wood so what you need to be able to graft is you need what we call the cyan wood this is the variety that I'm going to be grafting and then you need root stocks but this is an apple root stock here this is what's known as a MM106 which is semi-dwarfing or semi-vigorous whichever books you look in which will produce a, a medium sized tree so we're going to graft this wood onto this so I'm going to show you how you do it what you need is some basic equipment to be able to do it. You need a pair of secateurs, you need a good sharp knife and it has to be very sharp indeed. So if in doubt, if your knife isn't that sharp, I would advise you just to make sure that you just give it a, a final hone with a, a stone like this, a diamond sharpness so that you've got a lovely sharp edge on there close it up when you're not using it. You need labels and you need some electrician's insulation tape. I've actually potted my rootstocks into some about eight inch pots of multi-purpose compost so that will get the roots growing nicely down in there. So they're potted in there. So how do we graft? Well this is the rootstock, this is the sign. So initially what we do is we just trim off the rootstock to about six inches six eight inches like that so I'm just going to trim that off cut the top off so I've now got this um, short growth there and then I've got to prepare my cyan wood so what I'm going to do here is take a bit of this cyan wood and I want it about four inches long something like that so I'm just going to cut it above a bud there so this is the rootstock and this is the cyan just here so that bit's all very simple. Now what we've got to do is to make splice cuts on both of these to join them together. So what I'm going to do is using my sharp knife and I always work on the cyan first. I'm going to make a, a long sweeping cut. So you've just got to go for it in one go. So you can see I've got that lovely long cut on the cyan wood there. And then what I need to do is make a corresponding cut on here so I'm just going to put that down for a second and I'm just going to then make an upwards cut like that 
Okay, now you might need to do it a couple of times, don't worry. And the idea is that when we put those together, they will match like that. Now, we've got a little bit of the green pith that we can see around the edge. That's perfectly fine because that will then grow over. Now, it's called whip and tong. So what we need to do, this, this is quite thin wood I'm working with here. I'm just going to make a little, little tong in the cyan. Now, bear in mind, I haven't done this since last year, so I'm a bit rusty. So I'm just going to make a corresponding one there. And then what will happen is that should then just lodge into place like that. And I'm just going to take a little bit of a slither of bark off there because it basically calluses over just like a, a cut. If you cut your thumb, which I've hit mine with a hammer, um, and it will wound over. So you can see that that's now been held together on its own until that little bit of breeze just blew it off. But essentially that is there just to hold that in position. Now to hold that nice and secure, we need to use tape. Years ago, nurserymen would have used raffia and wax and all sorts, but this is just electrical insulation tape and it's just a case of wrapping it round the base, start it off, we want it fairly tight like that and then making sure that these are lined up we can just then wrap all the way around and if you start at the bottom and work up it means the water can't seep in it gives you a waterproof seal we're going to go over that bud it doesn't matter so just keep going over making sure that that's really tight it's got to be in contact all the way around so just whip that round to the top and then I'm just going to cut that off. So as we can see now, we've got that really tight waterproof seal on there. So that will now heal over where we made the cut um, in the next month or so. Roots will develop in this part. And then in a few weeks time, these buds here will start to grow. And this top bud will grow and that will produce our new tree. So by the end of this year, we will have what we call a maiden apple tree, a one year apple tree. Don't forget to label it if you're doing lots of different types um, and we'll have a new tree. So I can then decide to train it either as a cordon or an espalier or as a step over or let it develop into a full size tree. So it's getting late enough to do it, but if you've got some root stocks and you've still got a bit of dormant wood, you can do it. So I'm gonna graft more of these and produce what will hopefully be our new orchard for when we find a new garden. So that's grafting for you. Well, thank you for watching Pots and Trials and please do tell all your friends about us. And remember, next week we're going to be starting properly in the vegetable garden, planting and sowing. So we'll see you then. Bye.